some technical difficulties. Sorry for the uh, being a little bit late, a couple minutes late here. Thank you guys for joining me today. Today I am doing a, uh, I'm going to show you guys my five top tips for the branch test. Thank you guys for showing up. The way this is going to work is I've, I've broke it down into five steps. Uh, the layout, the cut, the grinding, the uh, spacing, and the welding. So in each of those steps, I'm going to give you guys a tip plus a little bit of extra insight on things to do in that tip. So let's get started. Uh, while we are going through this, take notes of your questions. We'll be doing a Q&A at the end. So try to keep them about the branch, and uh, we'll get all your questions answered at the end at the end of the video. And then uh, stay tuned all the way till the end because we have a giveaway. We have a giveaway at the end, so stay tuned for that. Are you still live? See if people can hear you now. Can you hear me? Comment and let us know. Can you guys hear me? Turn my volume up. I don't know. I did. All right, they're saying yes. Okay, yeah, Okay, I think we're now. good. Good? All right, hopefully okay. you guys can hear me. We are live. Yeah, we can hear now. I'm going to start from the beginning. Thank you guys for joining me. Today I'm going to show you guys my top five tips for the branch test. The way I broke it down is uh, the layout, the cutting, the grinding, the spacing, and the welding. So I'm going to touch on each of those subjects and give you guys my most helpful tip and plus just a little bit of extra stuff here and there to help you guys with each uh, process, each step. Uh, the branch has a lot of steps and we can get into several different ways, but today we're just going to keep it fairly simple. And uh, so yeah, stay tuned. The, oh, write your questions down as we go here because we're going to do the last 10 or 15 minutes of this live video. I'm going to do a Q&A and answer as many questions as I can from you guys uh, so we can help you guys out in that way. And then uh, stay tuned for a giveaway. We have a giveaway at the very end, so look forward to that. Uh, let's get started with, there's a couple of things that you need to know about the branch. Whenever you get done with the branch, you will be pulling four straps. One from each of your ears. This is your ear, and this is your throat. You're pulling one from each ear and one from each throat. So that's four straps total. That's very important because in the first step of laying it out, you will want to identify the seam. If your pipe has a seam, whether it does or don't, you want to check for one before you put your wrap on or before you lay it out by hand. Check for your seam. The easiest way to do that is to reach inside the pipe, and you'll feel a bump. And you might need to brush it if there's like, you know, slag or whatever from the cut. Uh, brush it in there, that way you can make sure you're finding the seam and not just a, a bad spot in the pipe or something, you know. So reach your hands in there and find it and go ahead and mark it. That way you don't forget about it. Because the whole idea is you do not want your seam in your ears or your throats. Uh, that's the weakest part of the pipe, so you don't you don't want that, that to affect your, affect your strap whenever you pull it. The, uh, so you've identified your seam. That's that's the tip. That's the number one tip that I have for laying it out is finding your seams. It's very important. Do not forget to find your seams. I have forgot. I know this from experience. I forgot to identify my seams before. Luckily, it didn't cost me my job, but I was just lucky enough that it didn't land in my ears or my throats. So identify your seam, and then when laying it out, most generally you will be able to use a template, but not not always. Sometimes they will, will not allow you to use the template and they will make you lay it out by hand. Now today I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to go too into depth about how to lay it out by hand, but I am going to show you guys a trick to uh, laying it out in case some of you guys are worried about the math part of it or uh, just a anything else. It's not as stressful as it sounds. The whole idea of laying it out, the gist of it is quartering your pipe, uh, quartering and then breaking your quarters down into sixteenths. So you'll have you'll have sixteen spots. I don't know how to 
I'm not a math teacher, but what I what I'm getting at is you break it down into sixteenths is what you're gonna do. So without having a tape, you know, to and and having to divide, find your circumference and then divide it by sixteen to get your spaces. And without doing all that, you can get a hold of some receipt paper, real cheap, and uh, wrap the receipt paper around here. Overlap it two or three inches. Have a pocket knife handy or a pair of scissors. Pocket knife works best for this part. <clears throat> We're going to get it real snug. Make sure it's even. Some of you guys are probably wondering what kind of knife this is. And cut it in between your two long points. Keep your knife handy because you're going to need it, or scissors, or you'll have the extra piece from each side. So now you have the circumference of your pipe. You will fold that four times. As long as you can read a tape, you can lay out the branch if you have some receipt paper. For those of you that are worried about uh, being good at math or whatever, it's, it's fine. Don't get stressed out. You can do it without without a calculator. You don't even need a calculator for this. So that this is three. Make sure you're putting good creases. And then four. I folded it four times. And then to save time, those of you that some dogs I got somebody coming in the driveway. To save time. Hey. I'm gonna use fingernail clippers because you guys might end up carrying fingernail clippers in your truck if you're anything like me. But clip off the corners. You don't have to clip off or cut these corners off. But hey, hush, Paisley. Apologize for the dogs. Some people still can't hear. Some people can. So. So what that what that does by clipping off the corners is just allow you to. I apologize for those of you who cannot hear. I don't know if I'm not talking loud enough or what's going on, but. So now you have sixteen. Can you hear it? So now you have 16th, and you just wrap this back around the pipe. Make sure it's snug. And now you have everything marked on each side. I, I would just use a crow's foot uh, on each side, and as long as you got a straight edge, you make a straight line on each of these marks, and then go from there. But we can get into detail about the measurements and everything else you need to lay it out. But that right there is a super handy trick for laying out a branch. And not only is it good for not uh, being the greatest at math, but it's also good because you'll probably want to, I would, I would advise throwing this away after you use it one time because the next piece of pipe you're on might be 250 wall or 500 wall branch or just whatever. And it's gonna be, it might be slightly different the outside of the pipe. So what using receipt paper does is it allows you to get the exact circumference of the exact pipe that you're cutting on. So, once you're done with it, just throw it away. And that's that. So hopefully that will help you guys uh, as far as the laying out process. Again, keeping in mind that your scene is not in your ears or your throats while you're doing that. Uh, which leads me to my next step, which is cutting. Uh, once, you have, once you have it laid out, you have your mark on here. Before it's cut, you uh, the tip I have for for cutting is a clean tip and clean pipe. A clean tip is half the battle. Even if it's a brand new tip, you will want to make sure that you clean it. I often clean my tip the night before test just because I want to be prepared and I don't want to have to clean it because that's a tedious and can just make you more nervous on test day to sit there and clean it. Uh, you know, if you're in a hurry or you feel like you're in a hurry. 
So I, I often will clean it the night before just to make sure it's clean. I just, and already in my torch and everything. And the size of the tip that I suggest using on 375 wall or 250 wall, a good average tip size is, now I use a, a Victor torch is what I use, but uh, I use a, a one on To give you guys just a brief summary of torch tip sizes, uh, three aught is three zeros. That's smallest, and then you got like number three. You got you got smaller ones than these, and bigger ones than a three. But just to give you guys a range, a three aught and a three, three aught being the smallest, two aught being the next uh, next biggest, and then a one aught. That's what I use is a one aught. That's a good average size to use to cut through seventy five wall and two fifty wall, which will which will be the most common. Uh, branch test you will take. So, clean tip and clean pipe. What I mean by clean pipe is make sure you brush the inside real good where you're going to be cutting. So, before before this was cut, you will just brush on the inside of the pipe. That way, nothing uh, you eliminate as much as you can of any blowouts while you're cutting. Uh, clean tip will do that also. When you go to cut, fire up on your on your junk piece and drag into your line or just right outside your line because you probably want to leave your line that way you have room for error when it comes to grinding and then starts not only do you not want seams in your throat through your ears but you don't want starts or stops when you're cutting or when you're welding when you start cutting you want to be you want to start cutting out here and drag into come all the way across where you're going to pull a strap from a strap is going to be Two inches an hourglass down to one inch but I always give myself three or four inch you know safe zone there that you want to start and stop outside of that you want to you want this to be continuous when you're cutting and when you're welding uh, and whenever you pull out where you start getting uncomfortable and you pull out go back into your while you're still cutting go back into your junk piece and pull out that way when you get ready and set back up to cut again you can fire up in that cut piece that you that you pulled out of that way in case it blows out it happens out here or not because it's very important to keep this all very clean you don't want this to be messed up at all so do the same thing when you're starting in and come back into your cut do that all the way around and that goes for the hole that you will cut here but we'll get to that here in a minute so a clean tip and a clean and clean pipe is very very important. Uh, once you have made this first cut, the next thing we're going to do is grind. That's the third tip that I have on grinding, and the tip for grinding that I have is I've said it in some of these uh, recent helper videos. Prep is everything. I truly believe that, and if so whenever you're grinding, whenever you're prepping this, take your time and be patient. Be super patient. Don't get in any hurry. Make it fit. You know, the just of getting this fit. I don't know if you can see anything from there. You probably can't. But like I got a space here and a space here and even a space down here. But it's, it's touching. You can see a lot of that by looking down in here. It's touching down, down here. Anywhere it's touching, that's where you want to grind that way. You know it falls into place so you can just mark it you know where you need to grind flip it over grind it set it on the ground grind it whatever's easiest but taking your time this the grinding will take what feels like 75 percent of of the test you know that's what that is what takes the longest it is it is the majority of the test is grinding it and fitting it getting it to fit just perfect um, so if you're gonna be patient on anything the most patient you need to be is with the grinding that is my advice and my tip for grinding is be super patient and take your time and get it as close as you can get it because the better you get this to fit the better your bead will go the better you can get your space to be even all the way around and the better the whole process will go from there on out so can you hear me all right Kayla I can hear you on everything so. okay I apologize if you guys can't hear me Maybe it was the ones coming in late. I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on. You can hear on desktop and mo or and mobile. So mm. I'm not very sure. I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be in the recording. 
I apologize for those of you who cannot hear me still, but um, this is not going to be the one and only branch video that I make, so there will be plenty more to come, plenty more tips and tricks about the branch, so just stay tuned. Uh, there will be more to come. So, where was that? Once you get it, get it fitting is, is key. Getting it fit just right. Um, take your time in grinding. So you'll want to fit it as good as you can get it. And the next thing you want to do is bevel it. Lay your throats back quite a bit. And lay this, lay your ears back a little bit, but not near as much as your throats. You want to lay your throats back real quite a bit more than what more than what you would think and uh and then so you, you fit it bevel it check your fit make sure it fits good and then uh, if you need to touch it up touch it up you got your you got your bevel on there you left the landing you left the landing it's just like you want a landing left on here no landing on here but a landing on this piece and uh so everything's good you're good to go now you're ready to mark this piece but only after this is fitting perfectly uh, that brings me to my next tip is in the spacing when what I space with and what the guy that gave me my first chance on the pipe job he, this is what he told me to use, and I've used it ever since. I've tried other ways, but this is what I like the best. Um, it's three mini wedges. I like them just because they're small, and you can adjust your gap, but you put one here, one in both of your throats, then whenever you've, you've got it fitting good and uh, you got your hole cut already, it'll actually teeter back and forth. So that's what this last one's for. You will hang it where it's, where it's touching to adjust your ear gaps this way and it should just hang in there I mean it'll if you bump it it'll fall out but you just you tap that in there just as much as you need it so that's what I use to space that's that's my main tip is three mini wedges to space your branch but one thing I wanted to point out here is when you're marking your hole on the inside chances are where your ears at you're not going to be able to reach down there with your soapstone so i always mark it on the inside and the outside that way i just have an idea of where it should be whenever i make my cut it's going to look something like this that's my outside mark my inside mark is going to look i mean depending on how good you can get it down in there it's going to be a little bit of a difference but i always try to cut right on this inside line just because you do not want to cut down too far because if, if you haven't realized already whenever you go to space this you're actually it'll it's actually lifting it up I'm being dramatic but it's lifting it up so that will you actually want to leave it a little bit you want to leave this a little bit long this way. That way, whenever your pipe comes up, it's a good space and you still have something to weld to and you don't have a big, huge gap. So, um, but anyway, you make your cut, cut on the, on the higher line, and then you can use a 3-inch grinding cone, also known as a donkey dick. I know it's kind of vulgar, but that is the terminology for this right here. Grinding cone, you got your hole cut, and this works real good in that area. Grind it a little bit, take your piece, check your fit. Check it with your spacing tools, with your, with your spacing tools in here. That way you know exactly where it's going to be once you get done with it. So that's very important whenever fitting this branch is your ears. Pay, clo pay close attention to your ears. <clears throat> and then uh, and then whenever the same thing applies when cutting this hole in this piece of pipe as far as cutting you do not you don't want to start or stop in your ear and you don't want to start or stop in your throat you want to and the same applies starting on your junk junk pipe coming into your good pipe. 
So same thing applies there. Once you get once you get that cut out and everything you got it ground to fit the inside of this just perfectly, maybe a touch, you know, on the inside, just a touch on the inside all the way around, kind of acts as a landing, but not much. Uh, but you want it to be pretty much perfect all the way around on the inside. And then uh, when you're cutting both of these, back to the cutting, when you're cutting both of them, make sure you keep your torch. Make sure you keep your torch tip perpendicular, which means at a 90 degree angle from the pipe. This is a 90 degree angle. Make sure you're keeping this 90 degree the whole time you come around it. Same with making this cut. So you've got your hole cut, you've got everything prepped, it's clean, you're ready to tack. You got your space, you've heated it up, you're ready to tack. My tip for tacking, again, you do not want to tack in your throats or your ears. You want to tack in the blank space in between the two. Four tacks total. You'll put a tack here, cattywampus, and right here. On your very first tack, this is the important part, on your very first tack, just just one inch. Don't go any more than that. I don't care how good the space is. If you want to keep dragging it, it'll be tempting. Again, I know this from experience. I've done it one time. This is after I'd taken several branch tests. And uh, I was just cruising along. I was just tacking it. You know, I got it. Felt good. I was loving it. It was going good. And I get up and and I, I should have known better. I don't know. I wasn't thinking. And it, it closed up over here. This thing tweaked and it closed up. And I'd done everything I could, driving tools in, hammering this down. I tried to get it back right. Would not get back right. Um, like it might have budged a little bit. I made it work. I made my test, but it added stress that did not need to be there on test day. So one inch tack on your first tack. Very, very important. One inch tack. And then jump across, cattywampus permit. Put a one inch tack. And then from there, you should be good. You can go ahead and tack your other two sides. Um, you, know, you can put a little bit more than one inch, but I would just advise four one inch tacks to keep it from drawing too much. And along with the space, back to the spacing, you will, to weld this out, you will flip it over and then put it in a jack pin. To do that, that piece that you cut out of this will be laying over there on the ground. You done kicked it out of your way. You want to grab it and tack it like this because it'll reach across here because remember it come out of in here. You'll want to tack it off. That way your jack stand has a place to hold it once you flip this over. Uh, <clears throat> so you've got it flipped over. You've got it tacked off to your jack stand. Again with the ears. You might find that they will be a little bit tighter you know, than what they were when you spaced it, or uh, like 250 wall might be a little more springy or whatever, and it might have got tight right there. Don't stress out if that's a little bit tight. You can always soften it, like we've talked about in helper videos, or what I do before I soften anything, I take one of the mini tools or regular size tool, wedge, and drive it right here to open the space up where I need it. And then again, don't start or stop right here. Start, you know, outside your where you're going to pull a strap from and drag all the way across it. So do the same to them for both ears. I usually hit my ears first because they are normally the tightest spots. Um, if that happens, they're going to be the tightest spots. So tack, tack these and tack both your ears, then tack both your throats. And you're good to go. You're ready to weld it out. And that starting and stopping applies from every weld from then on out. When you hop past it, start right here and come across. Of course, it's going to look like this. You're going to tack it. And you're going to start somewhat uphill, but you don't want to weld uphill too much. But start like right in here. Strap's going to be right in here. So start right here and just every weld. When you start hot passing, start right here and try not to stop until you get past, you know, on past it. Same with the throats. Do not start or stop in your throats when you're cutting or when you're welding. Uh. I think that's, I think I've pretty well covered everything. One thing I know I forgot right off the bat was I was going to let you guys know what, what all you need at minimum to lay out the branch. Um, 
Soft tape. Flexible tape, because that's what you'll actually use to mark, connect all your lines once you get all your measurements. Soft tape, or if you don't want to use receipt paper, you can measure circumference and do the dividing yourself. Uh, soft tape, regular tape, the blue book to get the measurements, page 29 on a 12-inch test. Uh, it's actually, the, the technical name is 90 degree, 12 inch, 90 degree saddle. It's not called a branch, it's 90 degree saddle. Uh, just so you know, so you're familiar once you get your pipe fitter's blue book. And then, uh, so you got your soft tape, your regular tape, your blue book, or your measurements. It's just four measurements that you need to know. Receipt paper. And of course, soapstone and a straight edge. That should be everything you need that I can think of for laying out the branch. I think that's going to be it. Uh, I will now, Kayla has been fielding questions. For those of you that can hear me, hope you guys were able to learn something, but I'm ready to answer questions that you guys have and get them knocked out. Do we have any questions? Okay. Um, yeah, let's at first try to make them about the branch. Yes, uh, yes, try to keep them focused around the branch. That way we can get as many of them answered as we can. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention real quick while she's looking for questions. Identify your seam in this piece also. And I usually just roll it all the way to the bottom. That way it's not, I mean, you can roll it in between, you know, your ears and your throats. But I just, to be safe, I roll it all the way down to the bottom in this piece. So identify your seams on both pieces. If your pipe doesn't have a seam, no worries. Alright, James Dean asks, do you drab or whip your root? James asks, do I drag or whip my root? Uh, usually just drag. You should only have to drag it if this is fitting exactly perfect. The thing that's neat about a branch is, well, I mean, you can do it on any weld, really, but the branch, you have the opportunity to get a perfect fit. It just takes more time. The more perfect, the more time you got to take. So if it's a perfect fit and you got everything exactly how you want it, you should just be able to drag it, but... If it's not a perfect fit, whip it. If you gotta whip it, you gotta whip it. Alrighty. Um, what brand are the mini wedges? You know, I don't know. I do not know the brand. I got them from a local weld supply. We'll link you some in the notes that we're sending out to the email list. If you guys didn't hear Kayla, she said we will link all these tools and the brands I use, or better ones if I've heard of better ones, we will link them in the notes that you guys will get right after this uh, video. <laughs> Daniel asks, have you ever busted a branch test? I have busted one branch test that comes to mind. Uh, but it was an uphill. It was a 7018 branch. I had never taken one. Uh, I think the bead was 7016 and I left it too low. Because you got to have it real cold on that 7016 bead, and I left it real low, and I went top past it. Anyway, my uh, I got it finished, but my strap had trash in it because it was too too cold. So I have the other. Just to be a little more detailed, the other. Uh, if you guys watched my trailer, you know that I've busted I think four weld tests, give or take, over the six years I've been doing this. And uh, I didn't even make it to the branch. Busted it on the bell hole. But yes, one branch I have busted. Happens. Yes, it does. Real life. It does happen. Okay, some people have asked... Oh, here's one. What is the brand of the blue book and the author? We will also link this in the notes that we're going to send you guys. Yeah, we will, we will put the link. It says... W.V. Graves, but it's called The Pipe Fitter's Blue Book. 
but we will link everything Baytown, Texas. Anyway, we will link it in the description. All right. Let's see here. Matthew, a couple of people have asked about, um, like, if you're going to do an example and also about cutting out the straps. If you guys have specific strap questions, go ahead and throw them. If not, he's, I will talk about the straps in future videos, I'm sure, but. What did he, what did he ask about the straps so I can? Uh, no specific questions, so hopefully they'll just, drop some. Well, one thing about the straps, this is like a, a prototype. This is not, you usually have at least four and a half inches hanging out, maybe five, I can't remember. But uh, this is just a little prototype that I brought in here to show you guys. Um, but a, a, a normal branch on your butt welds and your, and your branch test, or a normal strap, I'm sorry, a normal test strap is one inch by nine inches. So therefore, in the middle of this weld, it'll be four and a half inches here and four and a half inches down. It'll be nine inches by two inches, but like I said, it'll hourglass down to one inch on the branch. The branch is the only one that's that I've done that's two inches wide. All your straps are two inches wide, but they hourglass down to one inch where you actually where you're actually going to be testing the weld at. Uh, somebody asked, have you ever used solder wire for spacing your branch? I, I have tried it. That is another way that I have been shown. I've tried it. Uh, I just, it was hard to get mine out whenever I'd done it, but I, I, I did like the idea. Um, a guy showed me and I tried it. I'm just so used to using my mini wedges, but solder is another good idea. If, if you guys get used to doing it that way, it's a great idea because you can, that solder will squish, you know, so you can. You know, you can hammer this down if you need it tighter, and then you can just wiggle it out of there. So, it's a good idea. Um, let's see here. Was there any specific questions about the straps? Somebody wants to drop that. Um, are you going to do a full video of welding the branch? I will definitely do more videos in the future. This is not the only branch video that I'm ever going to do. Um, definitely look forward to more more tips. I mean, I've got so much more I can talk about about the branch. Uh, so definitely look forward to more videos about the branch. Cutting it, fitting it, welding it, everything. Like, I will go over a lot of it in due time in future videos. Terry asks, is it always, uh, is it typically a two-bead cap? Yes. Uh, two-bead is is very common sometimes three but yes mostly a two bead is what I normally do I guess two or three two on the 250 wall and like three on your 375 wall is, which is what this is okay so back to the straps <clears throat> what's the process of cutting out the straps do you use grinder or torch and Jeff also mentioned describe the Nick break and what they look for the, uh, the, uh, not a good reason to have a straight edge, a two foot framing square, is because I believe, I think this is an inch and a half, and this is two inches here. Yeah, this is two inches wide, so what's nice about that is you can use it to actually just lay right here. I'm sorry, to answer your question, uh, cut them out with a hand torch. That's how you cut your straps out of the branches with a hand torch. Uh, you just lay this right here, that's two inches. And you, you usually, I mean, you could measure, you know, to find the exact center, but you can usually just eyeball it pretty good and just mark it. And then measure, you know, this has got a ruler on it. You can measure one, two, three, four, and a half. Same with down there, so. Uh, but like I said, it'll hourglass down to one inch. So yeah, we cut it by hand. And what else? Why? Oh. Another, um, is there another question on that? I don't remember. I 
Oh, I didn't tell you guys why I'm in the house. If you guys noticed, Oklahoma it decided to rain all day today. And my shop is uh, all metal, no insulation. So that's why we're in the house. Just gotta make do. A couple of people have asked about time, is there time limits for taking the branch? Uh, sometimes, sometimes there is a time limit. Uh, on average, if it all depends on, it all depends on how many people are testing and how many inspectors are there that day, but with your butt weld and your branch, it's a full day ordeal on average. Four or five o'clock is a common uh, time to get done. Uh, I've seen people get done at two o'clock because they're just real experienced, done a lot. And I've seen people get done at like six o'clock. Um, so it just depends kind of on experience, you know, and like I said, how many people are testing and how many inspectors are there. A lot of times after you get done with your branch, you're waiting on the, or if you, once you get done with your butt weld, you're waiting on the strap cutter, uh, you're waiting on the inspector to come look at your weld. Like there's a lot of downtime sometimes whenever there's not enough inspectors. So, uh, but yeah, that was really far past your question, but to answer your question, sometimes there is a time limit. It's, it's definitely a good idea to practice this uh, at least once, if not a couple, before you go um, on a job for your first time. Alright, um, somebody asked, a couple people have asked about, and I don't know this terminology, can you use LN25? Is that LN25 with dual shield, LN25 wire machine? Is that like a tip? Oh, yeah, that sounds really familiar. LN25. If, if, you're, if you're still watching, which maybe you are, maybe you can comment and describe exactly what you're asking about. It's, I believe it's like a flux machine, LN25. But I'm not sure, so I'm not sure how to answer that. Lincoln suitcase welder? Yeah, the, the only thing that I've um, experienced with one of those suitcase machines is like flux core and short arc. Uh, this is usually welded with stick. I've, I've never welded one with with uh, anything else. I'm sure there, I'm sure there's been somebody weld it with a MIG or a TIG, but I never have welded a branch with anything other than stick welder, so that's what I know about that. Um, oh, a couple people have asked why this straps hourglass down to one inch in the middle. Uh, like I said, an average strap, test strap, like on your butt wells, are one inch by nine inches. Um, I think the reason they do two inches on the branch is so they break easier. Oh, that's what I didn't answer about the nicks earlier. Excuse me. The nicks, uh, that's all you, that's the only way you can test one is by nicking it on a branch, on your branch straps. So like two inches just allows you to have more leverage, I think, is why they, is why they do that. Um, I think, not, not for sure, not totally sure, but on the nicks, I'll, I'll go into more detail on the nicks, once you have these cut out, you will nick them, which for those of you who don't know what a nick is, that is where you take a zip disc and you grind, usually, you always want to ask the inspector what they want, but usually it's an eighth on each side and a sixteenth across the face. Um, that's all that, all a nick does is control the break. That way it breaks in the weld, in the middle of the weld, so they can see inside the weld. That is the only reason they do nick tests. Sometimes they pull them, uh, but most generally they, they break them. They put them in, you know, a table or a receiver hitch, and they, you got a cheater bar that you slide on there and you break it. So that's what a nick is. Somebody asked, should I start practicing welding with stick? 
if you were wanting to um, pipeline weld, yeah. Uh, it's kind of hard because I don't know your situation, but if you're ultimately wanting to pipeline weld, yes, I would practice stick welding. I, I mean, I ran a, there's nothing wrong with any type of welding. Any welding is good. I've, I've said that before, I think, but um, I worked at a shop right out of high school for three years running a short arc. I mean, I've done a little bit of stick, a little bit of TIG, but I mean, 90% of the welding I did there was short arc. And I mean, it helped me a lot because I still learned a lot about fabrication, you know, so just being around a weld machine and being around fabrication and metal is good in general. So like, again, I don't know your situation, but uh, if you're wanting to pipeline weld, yes, I would look into practicing stick welding. Alex asks, would you recommend preheating the pipe? Yes, most generally, especially nowadays, whether it's summertime, wintertime, the inspector will, will uh, make you or will, he will want it preheated. That is part of procedure is to preheat it to whatever temperature. It depends on the hardness of the pipe, um, but they definitely want it preheated to anywhere from 200 to 350 or so degrees, depending on the hardness of the pipe. Um, is there a certain type of fuel gas that has to be used for the tor torch when testing? Uh, not a certain type, just the same thing we use everywhere else, which is acetylene and uh, compressed oxygen. Uh, yeah, I plan on doing, I need to do videos about that also, about just the common, uh, the common how-tos of cutting with a torch, with a acetylene and oxygen torch. So look forward to that also in the future. I think that's pretty much everything, but if we miss something, drop it in the comments of this video. Austin always answers his comments. You guys heard that. Um, we think we got everything, but if not, comment uh, in the uh, comment below. Let us ask any more questions you need if we haven't got anything answered, and I will answer your questions there or in a future video. Now we're going to do the giveaway. So what I'm giving away is... Uh, a t-shirt and one hat or two hats? A one hat. One hat. Well, you can pick a color. Okay. A t-shirt and a hat. You get your choice of color with the hat. So Industrial Tradition is Kayla and I's brand. I don't know if, I don't know if I've talked much about it on my channel, but Industrial Tradition is just a, a uh, like a community. I mean, it's, it's you guys. We, we started a family channel before we started my channel, and so a lot of them people know more about it because but uh, it's a brand for people like me and you. I mean, just uh, people that work for a living, that travel for a living, that uh, just people that can relate to each other. So if you want to know more about Industrial Tradition, you can go to industrialtradition.com to uh, learn more about it. But that's what we're giving away is some merch. So t-shirt and a hat. You get your choice of a navy blue hat or a gray hat. So... Kayla's fixing to let me know how we're going to do that. Drop us some emojis. Drop us a comment. Whatever okay, you would you like. Said, I'm just going to scroll and pick randomly. Okay, so drop us an emoji. Right? Just an emoji? Or, yeah, or a comment, whatever. Oh, okay. Just comment, drop an emoji, whatever. Just comment, and she's going to randomly scroll and pick the winner. For one winner for a t-shirt and one winner for a hat. Comment, comment, comment. Let us know that you want to win. I'm digging this new it. mug, too, if you guys haven't noticed. Winter products coming soon. Love it. Matte black with white on the inside. Ah, goodness gracious. All right, we're going to do the hat first. All I'm right. scrolling. She's scrolling for the hat. Scrolling. Scrolling for the hat. Alright, let's see here. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Oh no, my computer's freezing. <laughs> More technical difficulties. Oh my goodness. Alright, here we go. David Garcia? 
David that Garcia. Right? Is that are we saying that right? David Garcia, way to go, man. You won a hat. Pick a color. You want me to comment what color? Um navy blue or black? Yes, pick a color. And then email industrial tradition at gmail dot com. Uh David, and I will get it to you. David, pick a color, gray or navy blue, and email industrial tradition at gmail dot com. And Kayla will make sure you get your hat. <laughs> YouTube is censoring you guys' comments and emojis. <laughs> I don't know what you're sending, but it's <laughs> okay, here we go. For the t shirt. For the t shirt. Come on, Vanna White. What's the uh what's the stat? Is this the shirt they're getting? Uh, you, you'll get to pick a t-shirt. Okay, you can pick a t-shirt if you guys Out of know. what we have, or we have stock coming October 1st if you want to wait, but I'll talk to you about that in email. So, for Alrighty. the shirt, you will get to pick, you can, they can pick one of these too? Huh? Once they... Anyway. Yeah, if we have it in stock, yeah. If we have these in stock, you can get a pipe liner, a traveler, a welder, or a farmer. Um, so you can get one of these, or you can, so we've got a couple more, we've got this and a couple more, uh, different branding styles but who's gonna win the t-shirt let's see here let's see here roll in roll in roll in oh what i was gonna say was you can go to the website and check out the t-shirts yes all right to see what we have see the options we have who's it gonna be who's <laughs> leaving this live video with a t-shirt all right daniel cooper daniel cooper it is yours man email kayla at industrial tradition at gmail.com and she will talk with you about which t-shirt that you want what else what else what else i think that's it thank you guys that's going to be it. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you so much for the unscripted uh, video. Now you guys know what it's like with all my uhs and what's and everything. I like to edit that stuff out normally, but I couldn't today. I had to do it in the house, but I wasn't going to let that stop me from showing you guys things that you guys need to know. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next Friday. And what are we going to do? We're going to learn something. You guys go learn something this week. Thanks for watching.